Welcome to Beyond Distribution with GTDC Podcast. The threat environment like cybersecurity is evolving rapidly, and the channel has to adapt even quicker to compete, according to Klaus Schlichterle, Group CEO of Infinigate. In this episode of Beyond Distribution with GTDC, Klaus discusses the shifting risk landscape and weighs in on a number of other industry developments with podcast host Frank Vitagliano. How does cybersecurity factor into new channel sales growth? What effect does digital transformation and workplace transitions had on the distributor's services strategy? Enjoy this newest episode and let us know by reviewing our podcast series. Thanks for listening. Welcome everybody to another edition of Beyond Distribution. Uh, today, I am delighted to have uh, the CEO of Infinigate, Klaus Schittelay. Klaus, how did I do? I do okay with that? Yeah, no, pronunciation is pretty good, actually. Schlichterle, <laughs> Klaus, sounds very close to what you said. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. Not easy, I know. <laughs> well, good. The Klaus part was easy, that's for sure. <laughs> that's true, yeah. Uh, I deal with the same problem lots of times in the United States with Battagliano. The minute they see 10 letters. I can imagine. Nervous, you know? Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, but look, we're we're delighted to have you and certainly thrilled to talk about what's going on at Infinigate because uh, clearly there's been a lot going on. Um, before we do that, though, uh, just tell tell us a little bit and tell me a little bit about, you know, your sort of journey into IT and how you got where you're at and, um, and uh, a little bit about that, if you would. Yeah, my journey into IT actually started as a student, you know. Um, I was fortunate enough to uh, know where I was at a school. They had computers back then, and I started programming. So I'm a I'm an educated programmer. Mm-hmm. And then later I decided after, you know, finishing my studies to, to go straight into IT. And then shortly after into a distribution with uh, Computer 2000, which was uh, an iconic company in the IT distribution world. Yeah. Um, and then one of the founders of Computer 2000 actually was also a founder of Infinigate. So uh, ah. after 15 years of Computer 2000 and Tech Data, uh, I moved on to uh, to a vendor called Logitech. And then uh, six years ago, I, I joined Infinigate as the CEO. Um, so I'm my lifelong as an engineer, very interested in technical things, you know, programming, IT products. And cybersecurity lately as well, which is uh, very interesting, also from a technical point of view. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that for sure. Well, one of the things that now is interesting to me because I didn't know, but you also had the vendor experience, and that I yes. think certainly helps you, certainly as it relates to the partnership that distributors have with vendors. You know, in terms of getting product into the marketplace, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, I was designing was part of my job uh, designing all the programs with distributors. Yeah. So I looked at it from the other side, you know, how can I motivate actually distributors to sell more Logitech products, you know, and uh, also how you can streamline uh, distributions landscape. We had 360 distributors when I started and uh, two years later we were 60. So, uh, you know, getting volume into distribution helps and having the right program helps. So I have been looking you know, at distribution from a vendor point of view as well was very interesting. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't acknowledge or really understand the value of that. I, um, I, you know, have never worked in distribution, but mm-hmm. I've been a distributor customer and partner for a long time, either as a vendor or for yeah. a few years as a solution provider. And there's a lot to be said for that uh, because you really have to be able to put yourself in the other person's seat for a little bit and understand the implications of, you know, designing programs and, and what exactly. it means when you design a program and make a, what you think is a minor tweak, yeah. but yet really flows through and impacts uh, greatly, you know, somebody's, absolutely. you know, bottom line or somebody's P and L, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah that's great. Um, well, you know, over the last, uh, certainly the last year or so, Infinigate has made some, you know, significant acquisitions um, and just done a lot. Before we talk about that, because I do want to understand your strategy around that, yeah. tell, tell us a little bit about Infinigate and, you, you know, uh, customer set, where you focus, you know, product set, et cetera, just to get yeah. a better sense for that. Yeah, Infinigate is a, a 
value add distributor completely focused on cybersecurity, secure cloud, secure network. So we have really um, a focus on this ecosystem around cybersecurity. Companies 25 years old. Uh, in the meantime, we are in 50 countries. Uh, the main focus is on small, medium sized customers, um, but also we do enterprise business, obviously. Uh, we have been expanding rapidly in the last uh, three years. Um, and I think that's that's that was necessary to increase the relevancy of the company with the vendor community, uh, offering a much broader geographical footprint and a better machine basically for vendors to tackle markets. Cybersecurity is a very fast environment. You know, companies, vendors, they get a hundred million from venture capital, they have a nice product, now they need to sell it globally. Uh, they cannot hire people to do that for five years and try to get the product into a market. So that's why we, we distributors actually have a very good sales function for those vendor partners, uh, getting them into the marketplace fairly quickly. And uh, yeah, Infinigate, with the specialization of, uh, of cyber and uh, focusing on small and medium business customers in Europe, more enterprise in Middle East, uh, offers a broad uh, range of uh, services and uh, sales activities for our vendor partners. And, I think it's also important that we speak the language of those cybersecurity companies. So we have experts, lots of technical people, pre-sales, post-sales, and we understand the challenges, you know, with a ever-changing threat landscape, you know, the speed of activity and the speed of getting into the market is completely different to, let's say, regular hardware-driven uh, businesses. So there are really specificities around uh, Infinigate and how we go to market for our vendors. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. You um, <laughs> you hit a lot of really important items in that in that description. I mean, the clearly cybersecurity is 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 um, is and will continue to be uh, the, a major focus uh, yeah. for o o obvious reasons. And also getting into the SMB space, which, as you know, needs to be done through a channel uh, yeah. if it's to be done effectively is really important and um and it's bigger than a lot of people realize in terms of the tam uh you yeah. know in, in smb yeah yes yeah um and the the idea of because clearly you know in europe you you do compete with some bigger players but also within a country i'm sure now infinigates uh, size within various countries has now become significant enough so that you do have a big footprint and you do have a significant yes. presence, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I started five, six years ago. Company had 300 million revenue. Now we are shooting for 2.6 billion. Wow. So that has uh, a totally different significance, obviously, in the marketplace. We are addressing many more customers uh, than before. And I think that's the the beauty of uh, you know the the size of a company. As bigger you get, as more you can address. And in our space, uh, um, you know the size we have achieved is significant. Uh, obviously, not comparable to any broadline distribution, but uh, for cybersecurity, it's a quite significant marketplace we're addressing, and uh, that helps us obviously to increase relevancy. And also deploy our services across different geographical regions quite efficiently. You know, we're yeah. sharing best practices. And uh, as I said, we have many people with a uh, in-depth technology understanding of products. And we can share that now across uh, the whole company. Uh, it's much more efficient than just serving maybe seven or eight markets, which we did in the beginning. Yeah, no, that's a great story. I mean, that's 7x growth in in. A relatively short period of time but what's also yeah. significant is that unlike a lot of companies that you know are growing that dramatically you guys have been around for 25 years which <laughs> so Correct. so it's yeah. not like it's a you know it's like a small new company that's you got to worry about you, you've been in place yeah. for a very significant amount of time that, that's yeah correct i think in the beginning of course you know swiss based conservative company i think right. we just set the base you know right and the founder who did a tremendous job to get this company up and running, you know, obviously was very conservative in, uh, you know, how to uh, grow the company and not having any debts, you know. So, of course, when you grow like we grow, you know, you need to be a bit more aggressive on how you financially structure the company. And that actually gave us uh, the boost in the last two or three years, you know, that we have a private equity in the company helping us to finance the growth. 
Uh, and also, obviously, it's important to have a healthy financial framework, which uh, which we have to uh, sustain that uh, that growth. And we have uh, um, also for the future the possibility to continually grow uh, in a similar fashion. Yeah, which is also good. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great, and um, it, uh, it it's pretty impressive. Uh, and of course, you know, you pick cybersecurity as your primary focus, which was clearly yeah. the right you know, right product set to focus on and invest in uh, over the last, you know, well, arguably 10 years at least. Yeah, um, that was that was actually the founder who actually uh, put that principle in place. Uh, today, I need to sometimes defend that position, but as long as cybersecurity grows by 10, 15, 20%, oh, yeah. I don't see the need to go outside of cyber, you know. If that would flatten down, that's a different story, you know, but as long as we have enough uh, fuel in the tank, I see no reason to walk away from uh, this focus. Well, yeah, not only that, but if you look at the if you look at the number of startups in the space, yeah. and take away AI now, which obviously mm. everybody's talking about, but take away AI, you look at the number of startups, the vast majority of them over the past number of years have been cyber. Yeah. And frankly, it's really important for both the vendor community and the solution provider community as well as people like me who are in it and around it yeah. to, to get help figuring out who are the companies that matter. You guys have exactly. the ability to do that, right? Yeah, it's we have this through. function of uh, sorting out the right uh, portfolio, basically. Yeah. That's one of our functions. And uh, yeah. let's say resellers, uh, I think they, they quite appreciate, you know, that we have this uh, portfolio function uh, by sorting out uh, the, the right portfolio for them. Yeah, uh, it's a very important function. Yes. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, good. Well, obviously, a lot of your growth, you know, uh, you know, has been, uh, you know, generic. A lot of it has been, you yeah. know, organic. But yeah. there's also been some that uh, has come in from acquisition. So, talk a little bit about that because clearly you guys have, have, you know, done a good job recently with that. Uh, what what have you done, and what's kind of your strategy as you look at different companies to to continue to think about acquiring them? Yeah, the the criteria looking at companies is obviously that we want uh, companies focused on cybersecurity. Sometimes yep. we need to make a bit of concessions, you know. But in principle, we are looking for companies being focused on cybersecurity. What we like is actually companies which uh, have a similar model we have, you know, that they cover multiple countries out of a hub. So with Starlink in, in uh, Dubai, that was obviously the best setup uh, because they are serving uh, the whole of the Middle East, you know, and that is a perfect match. They're completely focused on cyber. They have this hub and spoke model where they manage everything out of Dubai and then they serve Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait, uh, Egypt, Morocco, I mean, many countries. And uh, that was a perfect match, you know. I just needed to convince, obviously, the owners to join the family, which mm. uh, luckily I managed to uh, convince them and... Uh, they are part of the family now. Uh, and the other acquisition, Nuvias, was similar. You know, it's also a company with multiple countries they have. So that gave us really uh, a leverage by buying, you know, and uh, acquiring and merging with companies which have a hub and spoke model helping us to scale. Yeah. Uh, we are also looking, you know, uh, for specialists uh, in, in a country where we are still small you know there was a company in uh, france the db we acquired uh, that was a local local uh, uh, cyber security distributor and we are still looking actually uh, in the same fashion you know for companies who maybe you know cover multiple countries in asia that would be perfect obviously there are not too many and uh, um, in certain eastern european areas obviously similar models uh, yeah. and yeah as we speak we are looking we will see how it pans out because you always need to convince the other party to join the family obviously but uh, so far it worked out very well with uh, the companies we've been uh, getting into the infinigate group yeah it's a great story um you you briefly mentioned this uh but obviously one of the questions that anybody would ask a company like yours that's been as successful as you've been in Europe is what are your thoughts about expanding outside of Europe, right? APJ, for example, or even or even North America uh, at some point. Are you thinking, yeah. are you considering some of that or at least? Is yeah, something yeah, yeah. About? We are looking into into all geographies. Let's let's put it this way. I think the most promising for me is, is APEC. 
because I think there's similar models, uh, you know, available that that they are running here in in Europe and Middle East. So a company which has maybe you know many countries, uh, uh, in, in their in their in their uh, organization. We also looked at the, uh, North America, obviously, but it's very margin dilutive. It's very competitive, you know, and um, the margins are not as good as they are in APAC and in Middle East and Europe for the simple reason that a lot of vendors have their own infrastructure. So there's much more fulfillment you do basically in US and that usually puts uh, a stress on the margin. Uh, that's why I've not been really looking into that market. Maybe as a next step, uh, you know, when we run, run out of gas in terms of uh, additional expansion, you know, maybe we look again into North America. But for now, it it doesn't look like it's really necessary for us. Yeah. Well, APJ for sure does yeah. sound like it's an interesting consideration. One of the things that you, I know you know, because you're on the board of GTDC and you you are part mm -hmm. of our of uh, our advisory uh, group. Yeah. Um, we're going to expand into uh, APJ. Yeah. Um, we, in fact, are heading out to uh, Singapore here next month and meeting yeah. with our existing members who are there. Um, yeah. Because what we're finding is exactly what you said, is it's similar to Europe. It's got a lot of uh, areas where we can continue to provide the value that we provide in a market yeah. that still has huge room to grow. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, I think that's great. So. That'd be terrific. We'll be uh, we'll continue to work together then in another uh, another job. Absolutely, yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. <laughs> um, so the um on the cybersecurity front, you know, obviously there's you know anybody who's in the space can can understand the rationale of why it's so critical, why it's so important. Mm -hmm. But from your standpoint, particularly as you work with SMBs. You yeah. know what? What's driving it? So it it isn't just, for example, the you know remote work environment, which I'm sure has helped fuel it. But there's a lot of things that are driving it. What 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 is it from your standpoint that you that you see? Yeah, there's a whole long list of different technologies within cybersecurity. I mean, one example is privileged access management. You know, when you have a bigger company, uh, let's say you have 100 people, 200 people, which is still mid size. You know. Yeah. You need to maybe manage, uh, you know, everybody's access rights into uh, your your network, your your drives. Um, so that's a big big area of uh, development. And a lot of companies move into the cloud, so that should be done obviously in a in a very secure fashion. Uh, so that's driving a lot of cybersecurity. When you're in the cloud, you 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 need it even more. And uh, a lot of companies also stay hybrid. You know, they they have still their firewall on prem, but they're also in the cloud. And they need they need basically both. You know, on prem and the cloud. Then networking uh, needs security. Uh, that's that's also a big area. You know, where we have uh, quite a bit of growth because any network you need to have secure, obviously. So um, uh, and there are many other topics. Uh, forensics, for example, also very important. It checks the behavior of people. Uh, when they are locked into the company network, and there you can read basically is there a possible, you know, cyber attack, yes or no. So you check basically on your internal people. You check on what's coming from outside. There, there are so many different technologies, uh, and they grow differently. You know, the endpoint business is still growing quite nicely, even though you know ten years ago you would have said, yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's just a little bit of. Uh, uh, you know, a, a product everybody has on his PC uh, to protect the endpoint, but the endpoint is also uh, growing rapidly, and people need uh, obviously endpoint protection. So it's a it's a vast field of technologies. You know, file transfer. It's also very uh, important to have that secured. And a lot of SMB companies, you know, they're diving into the step by step. You know, they have maybe a virus scanner in the beginning. Okay, fine. Then they want to encrypt emails. Okay, next step. Then they want to have privileged access management. Next step. So there's always a next step in cybersecurity because also the threat landscape changes. So yeah. people then need to think about, oof, there's a new way of attacking, phishing, uh, emails, you know, which you need to find and uh, uh, protect yourself. So there's always a next step within, uh, you know, smaller and mid-sized companies, but also big companies, obviously, 
Uh, and the average is actually on big companies, the average is they have seven different cybersecurity vendors to protect the whole company. You know, when you talk to real big ones, let's say wow. uh, UBS or, uh, yeah. you know, big, big banks, uh, yeah. they have up to seven different technologies from seven different vendors to protect themselves. Wow. And uh, from a vendor perspective, obviously a lot of vendors work also on more technologies. You know, that's also a consolidation happening there. You know, when you take, uh, you know, the big vendors, they have a coverage across several technologies, but not all of them. Right. So what happens is also vendors are acquiring companies with technology to get them in. Yeah. So uh, it's an interesting trend and we will see how that pans out, you know, but there are a couple of real strong players that grow very nicely, but they also acquire basically technology or uh, develop them by themselves to cover more areas of technology, but it's so complex still. And I think it's going to be the next 10, 15 years still very complex, you know, that it's important to have an in-depth technology knowledge uh, to have the, the end user, you know, putting the right stuff in place to protect themselves step-by-step step, uh, against possible threats. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting because what you just described plays perfectly into what, a good distributor does right yeah. and, and you know back when we had our european event um a couple of months back i talked a lot about the ecosystem and and distributors sort of you know sort of managing uh the or orchestrating if you will yeah. the ecosystem and this is a huge part of it because there's this yeah. huge security ecosystem now but somebody's got to be figure out what products work with other products? How does how do you do yeah. solutions testing? You know, how do you do um, yeah. you know, set up labs in order to make sure everything's working properly? You guys do that, and by the way, you do that with expertise in each of the yeah. categories that you just talked about, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Also, we have lots of end user data because we know obviously where a software license goes. You know, yeah. so we basically see the end user, and we can also basically figure out, you know. If an end user has a product A, you know, shouldn't he take product B or C because they're very nicely complementary to what they have? So that's also data is uh, like gold, you know. So and we have that data obviously across uh, many countries. Yeah, I think you know I get asked a lot uh, about you know the future of distribution. It ha people ask me all the time. Yeah, oh, what where do you see it going? Um, and it's interesting because I it, it's obviously. I think it's the ability to analyze and act on the data uh, that has been part of your world for so long. The issue has always been, how do I make it manageable to, to be able to do that, to be able to actually act on it? And I think the implementation of the platforms that all of you guys are building and developing and running your business off of, and the ability to take that data and then utilize it it becomes the next level of differentiation that nobody else can do, right? No, Correct. Nobody else can do. Right? Yeah, we invest a lot of money into a data lake. So there's a, a, a you know a BI system, but they call it data lake. You know where they basically put all available data internally and externally, enrich it. You know so we can basically get the best out of the data we we get from internal sources as well as from external sources. And it's a huge project. We are quite advanced, you know, and I think that will be our next level of finding new business by using our data from external and internal sources. Yeah, I think that's fabulous. And I think that's spot on in terms of what I think needs to be done and, and, and why I think and continue to think distribution is so valuable in Absolutely. the marketplace and yeah. it's only increasing, right? Um, and mm -hmm. if the pandemic taught us anything, it it saw it it kind of ended those discussions about oh this dis distribution and disintermediation and all this nonsense that we'd have, we heard for a while. But don't get me started on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I have my own experience when I uh, actually got recruited by Computer Two Thousand, nineteen ninety one. Yeah. yeah. The first comment I got was, "Ah, you guys get intermediated uh, yeah. pretty quickly, and you need to look for a new job." Right. Yeah. Here, yeah. here we go. Yeah. I mean, uh, thirty years later. I think, uh, you know, this one billion Deutschmark company at that time, you know, is now Tech Data Cynix with how much revenue I can not even follow how quickly they grow, 60 billion, 80 I billion, I don't 60. know. Yeah, it's about yeah 60. so, 
Yeah, so that that's uh, uh, you know the story about getting intermediated and look yeah. for a new job. Yeah. Totally, totally. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I I was part of the original group that tried to figure out with IBM how are we going to get PCs into the market, and we yeah. authorized all the distributors. This was probably back in the late '80s, mid to late '80s. Uh, so not that much sooner than before what you just mentioned, and you know here we are. Yeah, almost 40 years later. So anyway, um, so there are changes, though, on the horizon, though, in terms of business models, right? The whole area of the consumption models and, yeah. you know, SaaS and all of that is clearly changing the world as we know it. How yeah. do you think that's impacting distribution and how are you dealing with it in your company? Yeah, it has a, a, a huge and significant impact, obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first thing is you need to have a digital uh, business model, you know, where you can actually run, uh, you know, the provisioning of, of, of your product. And uh, we have acquired actually a company in the UK. Uh, they are using Cloud Blue as a digital platform. Uh, Cloud Blue is an industry standard platform uh, owned by, by Ingram. Um, but uh, we, we trust, you know, that that's the right product to, to be used. So digitalization is super important. Uh, the second thing is obviously you need to uh, train your sales force differently because uh, a SaaS-based, uh, subscription-based uh, payment scheme, you know, is a different product than a three-year license. And, and then obviously there's a financial impact because a three-year license, you know, you get the three years in the box uh, today. When you sell a subscription model, you know, you have maybe three years of monthly payments and uh, potentially, you know, it can be canceled at any point in time. Yeah. So that has a financial impact. Uh, so we need to model all that in for the future. Yeah. So there's still the legacy business, which is strong and big, you know, but we need to shift actually into a digitalized model, which we, which we did through this acquisition. We used the platform. We built the business. Today we have already roughly 180 million on a monthly basis, recurring revenue out mm -hmm. of 2.6 billion. So that's a quite significant part. It's growing double uh, uh, compared to, to the legacy business. So we can model a little bit, you know, how it actually pans out. Uh, I think it would be quite stressful if from today to tomorrow, everything would move to the SaaS model mm -hmm. because that would be financially not viable. You know, everybody would struggle. Yeah, um, that's that's for sure. So we need to go through this transition phase, uh, which is actually good because um, uh, first, of course, we will drive it. But there's lots of legacy business, which we partially probably move over to the SaaS business or, over time. Yeah. And also at some point in time, you know, also hardware would be going into a SaaS model or in a firewall as a service kind of business, for example. But that has a transition phase. I see that, you know, in the next 10 years transitioning. Uh, probably not as quickly as some think it's going to happen. Um, but there will be a, a transition in the next 10 years, I would say that in 10 years, I would reckon we probably have 50, 60 percent of our business on, on that SaaS model. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, Klaus, one of the things that I think uh, is underestimated in this whole transition is the impact on the solution provider. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I lived that world for a couple of years and as you know, cash flow there is absolutely yeah. critical. And to your point, the business model changes and the business that they were comfortable with and grew up in, whereas, you know, they sold something, they got payment within whatever, 60 and 90 days, yeah. et cetera, and moved on. They paid their sales team. That's completely changed now. So the way they finance yeah. their business and the way they run their business Different. changes, which I think puts more pressure on you as yeah. a distributor because they look for you to help them in that transition, right? Absolutely, yeah. 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 No, I mean, uh, together with our vendor partners, you know, we need to find this transition. We need to find ways to get that transition done smoothly. That's yeah. that's for sure. Uh, obviously, it's like uh, always in life, you know, they are competitors. They're born in the cloud. You know, they don't have the legacy business. Yep. And the transition is a tough one where, because... You know, when you do this transition, it also means your business model gets more centralized. And Infinigate was and is quite, uh, you know, uh, uh, local. So there's there's local country managers running the business. Yeah. But you have this digital platform, you know, that's a group-wide platform. So yeah. your whole company goes into a matrix model, you know, you centralize certain functions, 
it has quite a bit of implications, obviously, and we need to embrace it. So we really do the transition. So we are competitive against the newcomers who are only born in the cloud and have never seen, you know, the legacy business. They can fully concentrate on, on that business model. So that's, uh, I think, one of my focus areas, at least for the next two, three years, you know, to get that transition onto a digitalist uh, platform and business model more central to get that done properly. Lots of change management necessary, lots of people who need to change jobs, you know. So there's quite a, a, a big movement within the company now to get uh, to this more digitalized uh, model. Yeah, no, that, make, that makes a ton of sense. Well, good. So um, we're kind of running up against it. We usually like to do about 30 minutes here. So um, I've got one last question for you, which I think is very important and on everybody's mind these days. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, as you talk to your customers, um, how do people start? how are people starting to feel right about 2024 and and you know because there's certainly in europe there's been a ton of activity ton of things going on that potentially yeah. were headwinds right um and how are people starting to feel about you know the next 12 months 18 months yeah i think the next 12 months will be quite tough um there's quite a quite a lot of headwinds uh specifically you know germany seems like to be hit hardest you know yeah. Um, but also the rest of Europe. When I look into Middle East, you know, we have growth rates. I mean, I've seen in my whole uh, business life. You know, it's really exploding. Uh, but Europe is tough, and uh, I I see only you know uh, who weighs out for for us as a company to continue growing. That means we would need to do more business with our existing vendors. Uh, by either getting more contracts in countries where we don't have them, you know, because not every of our vendor partners signed us up for the whole of uh, the regions. You know, that's one way for us to also give uh, our vendors the opportunity to maybe streamline their distribution landscape, you know, not having too many distributors uh, or grab market share, you know, which is not that easy when you have mainly vendors where you have 60, 70, 80% market share, it's not easy to, to grab more. Yeah. So I think there will be headwinds. And we need to be prepared that uh, it's a bit of a rougher water we are riding right now. Um, I guess it's temporarily, um, but uh, from what I can see, it's it's getting a bit rougher. Yeah. Um, but rough in our environment means it's 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 not uh, thirty five percent growth anymore. You know, it's maybe fifty. So yeah. that's uh, that's the difference. Yeah. Well, this this coming from the man who's grown uh, seven times, seven X in five years. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have a feeling that that you'll uh, you'll figure it out, and that uh, certainly yeah. a lot of what we've talked about uh, makes a ton of sense. So, Klaus, this was really great. It was it was certainly good to get to know you better, and it was great to understand more about Infinigate and what you're doing. And I have no doubt as you go forward, uh, based on what you just took us through, uh, you guys will continue doing well. So thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, Frank, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you very much.